insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 147, Disney Dissected. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my patient and understanding co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. So what makes you patient and understanding for this episode, dear? I don't know. I'm kind of confused. It's because you were patient and understanding with me when I was down in Disney. Oh, okay. I I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't completely sure. I I didn't divorce you while we were away. That's, so that is that's, true. That is true. So. And welcome back to the show, by the way. You did Thank take you. a couple of episodes off while Sam uh, sort of stepped in for mm-hmm. the topics he wanted to do. Yep, yep. Uh, so this is your first time back in the studio recording for um, almost two months now isn't it i can't even remember because i did an insights into tomorrow episode right right. you so we we kind of filled and then we were trying to find other topics to to talk about to give sam some more time doing the entertainment stuff and me and it just never there wasn't anything that you know nothing jumping out yeah nothing jumping out so. But he he kind of took to the entertainment side, so he may yeah, he so. may come in and fill in for you more yeah, often. We'll there see. you go. Today we are talking about dissecting Disney. And this is really about our <laughs> trip <laughs> right. to Disney. Right. So as previously promised on this podcast, uh, this week we bring you our review of the current state of Disney parks in Florida. Having spent a week down in somewhat sunny, often rainy, and oppressively hot Florida, we've had a chance to see if Disney has been able to bring the magic back. We'll take a look at the resort we stayed at, the amenities offered, and the service at the resort. Then we'll take a look at some of the technology that Disney's trying to throw at its guests to justify the drawbacks of a lack of service in some parts, but a cost as well. Mm. As they pretend to give you more services. Right. And finally, we'll we'll talk about our experiences at three of the four parks, because we don't really go to Animal Kingdom, because it kind of sucks. But <laughs> Other people enjoy other that people park. Other people do enjoy it. We, we, we don't. We don't. It's not one of our favorites. It's so. not, and it's not an all-day park for us, even if we do go. Right. Uh, and we'll talk about where those parks stand compared to our previous visits. Before we do that, though, I do want to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. You can also find audio and video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're available any place you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing. Give us your show suggestions, what you want us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. Or you can visit us on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com for all of our social media links. Are we ready? Sure. Let's go. So the resort. So this was our first time back since COVID hit. Uh, It's been over two years since we've been back. Uh, Tried to take it kind of light. We didn't go overboard on this time. We actually did sell our DVC uh, in the interim since our last time down. Correct. Uh, So we weren't staying at a DVC resort. We stayed at All Star Movies. Correct. 
So what was your first impression of the resort itself? Overall, I really didn't notice much of a difference. Um, one of the things that they've been pushing even before COVID started was getting you to do online check-in in advance of your reservation so that you didn't have to go to the front desk uh, for for check-in. Um, and again, like I said, that's been something that was going on before COVID even happened because we would normally do that where we would check in a couple of weeks beforehand and then usually once we got down to the area, we would get a text message saying our room was ready and we could just go to our room because we already had magic band. So there was no need to, to go to get a key or, or anything like that. Um, so that was still in place. So again, we didn't go to the front desk. Basically, the only thing that we checked in with was security. Once we first got there, you know, showing our D, they basically, yep, you're here. And, you know, we kind of went on our merry little way. And probably within, I don't know, 20 minutes of us getting to the physical resort, we got a text message that our, our room was ready, but we had gone to the main building to to go get lunch uh, and kind of walk around a little bit before we actually made our way. So again, nothing really seemed that different from the last time. Of course, it's been probably three or four years maybe since we've been at an all stars or a, a value resort because again we were using our DVC uh, for most of the the trip. So again, I didn't notice anything major, you know, different in in it. Um, obviously, and we'll talk about it. You know that the rooms have obviously been updated since the last time we had stayed at a value resort. Yeah, and that's really the first. The biggest thing I think that I noticed about the resort was they pulled out all the carpeting mm -hmm. because, it, because it was always themed rooms. It was always some kind of, you know, print carpet on there that was right, right. relevant to the happen, the building that you're in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, we happened to be staying in Dalmatians mm -hmm. while we were there. Uh, but they pulled it out. You had all hardwood floors. Mm -hmm. You had all brand new furniture. Correct. Uh, you had really what was an innovative approach to furniture where you had a, a convertible bed. Right. You had down from sort of a, a Murphy bed yeah. that when the Murphy bed was up, it was actually a table. Right. So that and it was so funny because I think the first time we went to convert it, we were like, what do we do? Like there were no instructions right, right. when all you really had to do was just pull it down so you just had to make sure that the table was yeah. was cleared off what was nice about it was the the use of space was much better than it, than it had been with two beds in there yes the problem was is that when we come in me specifically i come in with Lots a of load stuff. of technology <laughs> and what i'll do is i'll set up on the table and leave it there for the duration and right. unfortunately we didn't have that option here because the table went away at night because we had to use the bed. Right, right. So I could totally see if it was something where you were maybe only, you know, two people in a room and you didn't need to have that right. second bed all the time that you could, you know, easily leave everything. But I could see for anybody that had three or more people, you would always have to transform your room or just leave your bed down, but then you didn't have... You didn't have the any table. surface space. So that would have been a nice thing if they had something where they had like a flip down table attached to the, to the wall. wall. Yeah, like an Ikea style table. Right, right, where you could just flip it down and this way put the chairs because you still had two chairs. Right, you had to do something with the chairs right. from the table. Right, and that, and that was what was so funny was like seeing other rooms, what people did with their chairs. Now the other thing too that we had was you rented a scooter from an outside right. company, so we had it in our room. So that kind of ate up some of the room uh, in uh, some of the, the surface room of, of the, the hotel room. So a lot of people would put their... Um, chairs against the window. There was actually one that actually just put them outside. Yeah. I guess they needed, you know, that much yeah. more room. Uh, so it was kind of, you didn't know what to do with the chairs once the bed was down. Like there was no specific, you know, area. It was yeah. basically, okay, well, we'll put it over here for today. So they upgraded the bathroom 
area mm-hmm. as well. Yes. So traditionally what you had was you have a small bathroom that has a shower and a toilet and then your sink is outside in sort of like a little prep area. Right. And that for privacy in that area, you typically have a curtain that goes Well, it across. was funny because I remember years ago they didn't have the curtain. Right. You had nothing there right. originally. So that this way if somebody was brushing their teeth, it was out in the open, but where the sink, where the bathtub and shower and the toilet are, there was always a door. Right. And right. then at some point they added a curtain, a curtain so that this way if you wanted to get changed right. and, you know, have – so they, you know, so right. they evolved. So that's been evolved into a barn door style sliding door right? for additional privacy. But mm-hmm. what really struck me was – they replaced the door, the swing door on hinges mm-hmm. in the bathroom area with a telescoping door right. that slid in behind the wall mm-hmm. itself, which I thought was a brilliant use of yeah. space. Like that's yeah. one thing that they really did was when they redid the rooms, they they did things to maximize that space. Like over where you're cooler because you don't have a refrigerator anymore, where the cooler is, they there's a piece of furniture that that's kind of like a little breakfast nook type right. thing. Right. So. Because they had a coffee maker, right? Uh, like a single-use coffee maker there. They had your ice uh, bucket there, and then there was a drawer for all drink accessories. For, had and like cups the coffees and, yeah. and the teas and and everything to go with the coffee. And that area you could kind of use as a bar, right? Y- you know, your beverage keeping, right. you know, snack like a beverage area. cart, basically. Yeah, yeah. So the room was was okay. There were a few issues with it. Uh, the one thing we noticed when we got in there was the lock plate on the door was loose and eventually fell off. Right. Um, <laughs> the room phone did not work. And that we only found out because we went to call the front desk right. the one time and went. So we couldn't call the front desk for the phone. We tried to use the app, and we'll get into the app a little bit later, but we tried to use the app, and that didn't work either. Right. So you happened to find one of the maid service, and they were able to call housekeeping, and they got a hold of somebody. Because we had multiple issues with plumbing right. there, where they had to come and sneak the toilet. And it wasn't just us. There were three other instances where I saw them walking around with the snake. Oh, wow. So it was other rooms. people. Okay. So, so it, it was an issue with the hotel itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Um, oh, drainage. Oh, my goodness. It it rained, and you had literally swampland if you well, were walking and, around the, the And outside. that's something just in general with Disney. You can find on TikTok and YouTube other people posting videos from the park. Sure. Where But I've never had gets, that experience in all the resorts yeah, that we've been there before. Yeah, I don't think we've before, ever noticed. We've never, because someone would be out there taking care of it. True. They may have had drainage issues. In the but past, it was but we never just, apparent we just to never the, noticed to the it. Guests. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Uh, and the one area by the parking lot that had the, the big drainage issue, they had one of the grounds crew come through on one of their little John Deere's and track mud all over the sidewalk in mm. the process of doing that. Right, like, right. And no one cleaned that up. Mm. Um, so, and it started, it's starting to look a little run down and tired. There were a couple of areas there, some, there were basically, um, fire hydrant areas that, that weren't maintained. They were rusted. The paint was coming off. Okay. So it was, it was very un-Disney like, you know, Disney is always, even at the, at the discount resorts like that, they've always kept up with it. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like it's kind of run down. The first day we got there, the elevator, one of the two elevators was offline. It took them most of the day to get that one fixed. Well, what it, they were actually cleaning, they were cleaning the, um, I don't know what you call it, on the top where they had like plastic panels covering okay. the lights because when we had gotten up to our room or down, I don't remember, I ended up seeing the oh, the okay. maintenance and they were basically just cleaning. So there wasn't anything wrong with the elevator. They were actually just cleaning it. I so, see. And then really the only other big complaint I had about the resort was you had someone out there for the better part of a day who was pressure washing one of the staircases at mm-hmm. the end of the building. Right. And just the fumes, because it was a it was an internal combustion engine compressor that we're using. You you, you were gagging as soon as you walked out of your room. Mm. 
Now, granted, it was hot. It was humid. The air wasn't good to begin with. Right. It might not have been a but, good day to do that. You know, yeah. I mean, have have a little, you know, wait for people to at least leave and go to the parks because this was like, you know, first thing, first in, the thing morning, in the morning. Yeah. They're doing this, yeah. this type of stuff. So room service. So where we normally don't do room service, we'll put our do not disturb sign out there. They used to do daily room service. Correct. And now they're down to every other day, every two every days, three days. Every three days or something. And I think so, it's every four days if you're DVC. Yeah. yeah. And to me, that's a significant drop in service because they didn't reduce the cost of the room at all. Right. In fact, it went up. And you're getting less service there. So that was a ding, I think, in, in my book. Um, paying for parking. Still one of my biggest pet peeves that I have there. Right. And and again, going back to that whole, hey, we didn't check in, there was nothing ever said in anything. Right. Like, just hey, a blind by the way, now. because for the most part, we this was actually one of the first times that we didn't charge things back to the room. One, because we had gotten we had done a whole gift, gift card, card thing. Yeah. So that was a good portion of our thing our, our charges. And then we just charged it on to our various credit cards because in most cases if you were using a Disney credit card and your bill was a certain amount, you would actually get ten percent off. Whereas if you were charging it back to the room, you weren't going to get that that discount. Um so it wasn't until the end of our stay when we actually got our portfolio and I was like, oh, what were all these charges? And opened it up and it was parking, parking. That was literally all it was. And that's where, again, we've been there since they've been charging for parking. So it wasn't a shock for us. But what if this was our first time and we didn't know? That's something if you, kn if, you know, granted, yes, it's not the security officer's job checking you in. But if you're doing the mobile check-in, if you're checking in, you know, online beforehand, something should pop up saying, hey, by the way, just so you know, if you're driving, you're going to have this $15 a day or well, whatever. How did it they depends. know that we were driving is what I'd like to know. Well, because we checked in with security, that was what so that could have been a rental car we had for one day and got rid of us, or we could have been getting dropped off by someone. How do they know that you're parking there? Well, the and then time? that's the thing is that we would have had to. You know, I would dispute that charge because it was never detailed anywhere on yeah. on the original bill. And that's the other thing too, because y what used to happen is when you would go to the front desk and check in, they would ask you, "Oh, are you you know staying right. on property?" Because they would give and, you a parking you'd permit. Have a, right. Right. So now they don't even print out. A and they'd get your permit. license plate number. Right. But that's they got my license plate number when we checked in because security did have there was a camera mm. uh in the towards the back that could see my, so, my tag. So. so they're nickel and diming you there, mm -hmm. which was very annoying. Right. Uh, we bought the mugs, which I didn't want to do, but <clears throat> you thought it'd be a good idea to buy the mugs. Right. And the quality of mugs have gone down significantly. Mm -hmm. They've got the cheapest lids, the lids kept falling off. I, I almost lost the lid twice. It's just I was very disappointed at, at mm -hmm. that, but that's there to support the fact that you can't get multiple refills. You know, you you buy a disposable cup from them, you pay what four dollars for it, and you're allowed three refills within an hour or two, or right? Something like right, that, which is idiotic. It really is, right? Because Disney is not losing money on me getting a refill on my soda. And granted, you almost never got a refill on your soda, right? Right. Yeah. So. And and the problem that I have, but with the that fact is that they you're charging do me that. four dollars for for a soda, where ninety percent of the cost of that drink is the is cup. just the cup, yeah. And you're yeah. putting a chip in that cup now, so I can't get refills, which makes the cup more expensive. Mm -hmm. It's just it's an idiotic business model that they have there. Mm -hmm. Um. I didn't want to go on with any other complaints about the resort. Did you have any highlights? Any positives? Anything nice to say to counter any of my complaints? Well, the one thing I did like, which w was new, I think, since the last time we were there, is that they actually have, when you go to the buses, uh, if you're taking the the resort 
transportation because usually most of the time if we didn't have the scooter already, we would usually just drive to the park. This way we wouldn't have to worry about waiting for a bus or anything else. But because of the scooter, we had to use the, the transportation. And one of the nice things was as soon as you got to the area, they had a little um, schedule showing you when the next bus you know, estimated time when the next bus for the different uh, right. locations was going to be coming. So that I thought was very helpful. And, and they've had that at the moderate and the higher end resorts. Right. This was new for us. At right. The, at the value the resort. Value so it was resort. that so that, that was nice. a, a, a nice touch to yeah. to see. So. All right. So we'll give them a plus for that one then. Uh, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the technology that Disney is throwing at some of these issues. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly, and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars Trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights and Entertainment. Today we are dissecting Disney. So one of the things that Disney has done to try to enhance the uh, experience is go the technology route. And that technology route is apps on your smartphone at this point in time and, mm -hmm. and bands and, and all that stuff. Um, so right now, the Disney World app that they have with their nice little 50th anniversary logo on there is the central part of that technology push. Uh, you pretty much need it for anything you want to do, booking rides, checking times, getting into your room, pretending to call the front office because it doesn't work for that. <laughs> um, your photo pass. Yeah. Reservations. Uh, I have to say that I was very unimpressed with the app. I found it to be poorly designed. Uh, someone looked like someone gave a five-year-old a box of crowns and asked him to design an interface. It was confusing. It was not obvious or intuitive to use. Finding the information that I wanted just to go in and look up times or to look up available slots for reservations for different uh, uh, extra services like uh, building a lightsaber or a droid, you couldn't find that stuff. And the whole thing was predicated upon this whole idea of build your experience. And in order to do that, you pick the things you want, and that's all that you saw. If you ever wanted to stop outside of that, you had to go back through the entire wizard and reset all your settings in there to see anything. And I thought it was a terrible experience. Right down to the point that you bought one of the new Magic Band Pluses. Mm -hmm. and, and what happened with that? Tell us what happened with that. So I wasn't going to buy the new Magic Band, um, but the last... Day we were in a park, happened to be the Magic Kingdom, and at Magic Kingdom, they had a Haunted Mansion one. So, of course, me being the Haunted Mansion person that I am, all right, fine, I'll get it, you know, just to, to have it, whatever. And we charge it while we were in Hall of Presidents. I, you had already bought one, and you had no issues getting it to sync up. Everything was fine. I go to sync it up. And I get an error and I try and go through again. And then it tells me that the app has a bug and to uninstall and reinstall the app to try and fix it. I do that. Doesn't work. I try taking because there's a QR code. So I so first I try linking it by the uh, wireless by thing. the wireless link. 
That didn't work. Then I tried taking a picture of the QR code to do it that way. That doesn't work. Then I even tried entering the the code manually Which is a challenge entering considering how small those numbers are. Right. Entering the code, nothing. As soon as I would do it, it would fail and again tell me that I had a bug. So by that point, I was just fed up and after spending almost $50 on it, I went back to the store to return it. And of course, the cast member there was like, oh, well, if you do decide to, you know, purchase another one, we do have tech support people, you know, located throughout the park that would be, you know, willing to to help you. And by that point, it was already our last day. You know, maybe if it was our first day in the park and I had, you know, the whole rest of the week to worry about it. But this was literally our last day. Yeah. I was like, you and, know what? Uh, I'm you know, done. It wasn't, it wasn't the band itself. It was the app. Right. Uh, so that's really where I think the biggest complaint was, because there was a lot of things with that app. You know, the calling the front office. Well, when, that when was our phone calling didn't the front work, desk. We yes. tried to call the front desk. You can get to it through the app if you could find it, because it wasn't easy to find. Right, and that, again, that was another thing, uh, another challenge of things weren't where you thought they right. would be. Right. If you did a search, you it would eventually find it, but it was like, I shouldn't have to be searching every it was, time. It was almost like they did no user testing of this. And then that was the whole thing it. too, because when we were having the, the issues with the bathroom, I was like, all right, well, let me just call the front desk. And I'm like, and I couldn't even like Google a phone number for right. the front desk either. And then the one day I actually just walked up to the front desk and they were like, oh, well, you could have just done it on your app. I'm like, no, I couldn't. And she didn't believe me. Right. And she right. walked me through it and was like, oh, OK, that is a problem. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> like, I know it's a problem. Uh, like, I'm, I'm pretty tech savvy. I understand not everybody right. is tech savvy right. and you have to talk to, you know, every guest like we're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it really wasn't there. And then, so you can't even say, oh, well, it's because you had an Android because you even had the same problem and you have an Apple phone. Right. So it clearly wasn't user error. No, it's it was, something it was, with your it app. It was app specific. Right, right. Uh, so some of the other things <clears throat> I found were an issue was you could look up wait times for rides. Mm -hmm. They weren't accurate. I was, when you guys were going around and doing things, I was riding around the scooter looking at wait times on the app. Okay. Oh, my God. They were 15 minutes off, 20 minutes off. So they weren't updating they as were often. They were not done in real time on the app itself, mm. which makes the app useless at right, that point right. when it comes to that function. Right, because especially if that's what you're determining, oh, well, this wait's only, right. you the know, or this wait's 60 minutes, but yet the wait might only be 15 minutes if you actually went there, right. but then you don't want to go there the because. The entire purpose of the genie experience right is to you don't need a fast pass because we can tell you when these times trend right, here and right. it's completely wrong mm. um i lost my my magic band at one point in time because it was on a little holder on my your my original watch, magic. my original one um so we kind of panicked a little bit there we were able to get the ticket to get into the park but i didn't have a way to get into the room right so i was able to use the app for that mm -hmm. and it worked but it was awkward. It's like four screens in, you, you know, you don't know where on the phone it's it's transmitting the, the – so I'm moving the phone all around the thing to try to get the thing to work. Right. It scans the first time and it goes green but it won't unlock. Well, there's a prompt on the screen that you don't get an audible prompt on where you have to accept the ability to unlock the oh, door at okay. that point. okay. Yeah, see, I never tried doing it that way, so. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was not – it was not good. And the other problem is they don't have any free charging stations that you can use around the park. Right. If and you want to pay for them, they're Right. I was going to say they're, they have the charging rods that I right. know. And that was something that we knew going in from various other people who had been there and, and various other uh, YouTube videos and things that said, if you're going, you're going to be on your phone a whole lot yeah. more make sure you have some sort of battery backup so that you can charge your phone. And honestly, there was only, for me, there was one day that I I had to charge my phone, but I really didn't even need to. But that was also because we really weren't using the phone as as much. Well, and, and we'll talk about that you know, in a second, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and the last big complaint that I have about the app is they have this device where they're tracking the vast majority of people because you're dependent on it to use the park. Mm -hmm. And they're not using the data. We wind up outside mm -hmm. waiting for a bus. It took us almost an hour right. to get a bus when the entire line was full waiting for buses. How are you not using this? This You're tracking these people. Right. And you're tracking them for the purpose of taking a picture and tying it to their account. Mm -hmm. How are you not using that information to dispatch buses? Right. Or crowd control for different rides? Like, I don't understand why you would have all this information and then not right. use it for a, a constructive purpose. Mm -hmm. They're using it to try to sell you stuff. And right. that's all they're using it for. Right. And that's a huge insult to the, mm -hmm. to the guests. On, yeah. On no, I agree. Espe especially when it comes to the end of the night where you know everybody is tired, everybody is cranky, yep. why you would have all these empty buses. Now, granted, maybe you didn't have enough bus drivers, but maybe that's what you need to, to plan is that you always know at the end of the night you're going to have a rush of people wanting to get out. Why not put that extra Well, and in the past, staff. they've had instances where you've had cast members at the bus stops. Mm -hmm. And the cast members are calling in the dispatch saying, I need a bus for this resort. Right. I need a bus for this resort. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that. Right. And they didn't need it because they have the technology. They just chose not to use the right. technology. Yeah. So let's talk about that massive scam that is <laughs> Genie Plus. Oh, Genie Plus. So tell us how much we paid for that and how much we used it. So we paid $15 per person per day that we were in a park on a regular park ticket. So we only went to the park for three days, but the one day was the Halloween party. And because of it being a special ticket event, you don't use Genie Plus on that day. So we only had to pay for Genie Plus for two of the days that we were in the park. So $45, so $90 total for the two days for the three of us, because each individual person has to have it for however many days. And since we hadn't used it before, we figured, you know what, let's try it. Let, let's give it a try and see if it makes a difference or, or helps us out. We took one for the team so we could review it for the podcast. Right. And granted, there are... Lots of pros and cons. You know, there were a couple of friends of mine who had, had used it before and they said, oh, it takes a couple of days to get used to it. I'm like, well, I only have two days to get used to it. So I either need it to work or, or not work. And and the big push before used to be, you know, buying it ahead of time and 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 making sure you, you had it, even though you couldn't really do anything with it until the day of. And now there's some other changes that they're making to it. And again, I'm not really a hundred percent sure of what they all are because we're not there anymore. So I'm not really paying attention as to what those changes are, but I know uh, uh, one of the major changes was that you didn't have to purchase it until that day if you wanted to it get it. So it doesn't make again, it worthwhile. Doesn't, right. So, so how many rides did we get on using that system? Okay. So in, Epcot, which was our first day, we did the Remy ride with it. We did have a... We did it with that or was that with the virtual queue? No, the the virtual, the only thing that the virtual queue, you could do with the virtual queue was the Guardians of the Galaxy and that we didn't get. And that I woke up at so we got 645, so because that they had a seven o'clock and a one o'clock for the virtual queue. And I got up at 6.45 to try and get a 7 o'clock, and by 7 o'clock... So, well, we already knew the virtual queues were broken. Right, so that was... So we got one ride in Epcot? Well, we technically had two, because we ended up getting Soren, and then you didn't want to go on Soren, so we canceled it, and we ended up doing the single rider, which we didn't know... Uh, was available. Well, and that's another thing I want to talk about, but when we get to the sure. park. So, so we did have one, but then since you decided not to go on the ride and we they had that available, we used that in, in place of it. So we had gotten rid of that. 
And then that was when we made the Remy uh, reservation because the other thing, too, is when you make the reservation on the Genie Plus now, you can only have one at a time. Right. And then once the time frame starts for that reservation or that lightning lane, that's when you can make an additional lightning lane through your Genie Plus. All right. So we paid $15. We paid $30. Well, $45. $45 because I didn't go on Remy, so I'm not counting myself for that. So for $30, you went on one ride in, in Epcot mm -hmm. for $30. Mm -hmm. And how much did we pay for park tickets? More than thirty dollars, buck twenty maybe. I th think it was about that. I don't remember okay. so what. Thirty dollars for one ride. Mm -hmm. Then we did studios. How many rides did we get on with Genie Plus with that? We did. Uh, Maddie and I did Toy Story Mania with it. We did Mickey and Minnie's. Uh, runaway coaster with that. What else did we do? We didn't need it for... No, we did use it for Smuggler's Run. For the second run through. For the second run because, again, we did the... Uh, uh, the solo rider. The so solo rider. So we got three. Did we get a fourth one? I think we only got three. Okay. So, so we got three with that. So that's now 60 bucks. For four rides. Mm hmm Was it worth it? Probably not. This is $60 on top of $120 per person per ticket to get in to ride the rides anyway. Mm hmm Right. So we're talking about $150 per person. For Genie Plus and a ticket, and Genie Plus got you four rides. That to me is a scam. Mm. Um, the other thing that I found was interesting is uh, we got into Magic Kingdom early on Friday because of the of the party, right? And it was still regular admission in there. Mm -hmm. We walked past Peter Pan, right, and the Lightning Lane, and the Lightning Lane was easily a twenty minute wait mm -hmm. at Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. what's the purpose of the lightning lane if it's a 20-minute wait? Right. This is the problem that I have. Well, <laughs> when the regular ride is a 60-minute wait, a 20-minute wait is nothing. <laughs> but again, Still, yes, we know. That's not lightning. I'm sorry. Right. I understand that. Lightning is I walk in and should be able to get right on the ride. Right. Especially when I'm paying for it. Right. Um, what rides were not eligible? For Genie Plus. I don't know if there was anything. Besides Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy, because that was the virtual queue. Right, so you could only do virtual. Was Rise of right. the Resistance one you had to pay to get on? Or was that eligible with I Lightning Plus? I think it might have been, because I think what they do with their certain big ticket rides you know kind of their e-ticket rides is they offer the additional pay for me right lightning lane and there's so many of those that they put out and then there's so many light regular so lightning lanes and so here's, yeah. here's where the real scam is oh yeah so pay 15 dollars for for genie plus unless you want to go on this other ride and then pay another 15 dollars to get on that ride right and it's not always fifteen dollars because depending they on the rates because based on, on right the time, the time of, of year. And, so it right. could be twenty dollars to go. Okay. But all the ones that we saw where they were an additional fee. So like the Guardians of the Galaxy, we didn't get the virtual queue. But now they didn't so with with that it was only virtual queue or paid Lightning, Lightning lane. lane. There was no standby, meaning you couldn't just go and wait for two hours on a line to, to get well, on the thank ride. Thank God for that. Right. So it was either you got in the virtual queue for free, free, or you paid $15 to so get a time slot. So comparing Genie, the scam of Genie Plus to FastPass. Oh my God. There's no, there's no comparison between okay. 
that that I, that I think that ends the argument on that one. Then. Right there, there was I personally didn't now. If we had done a full Magic Kingdom day, I could see Magic Kingdom. Well, the problem I using... have with that is you can only reserve one at a time, right? And you have a one-hour cooldown after you've either canceled it or used it. Mm, I don't think we did in the app. You do because I was actually able because the one might may, might not have been on canceling, but. I don't know, use. because there was one that I had one reservation, and I actually had the next one, and it was actually overlapping, because the one was from, like, 1 to 2, and the next one was from, like, one thirty to 2.30, and I was actually surprised right. that it... Well, then they may have changed that. Or it could I have been a, a fluke. I a colleague that was down there two months ago and said that was one of the problems they ran into. So maybe that was something that... So let's move on from Genie Plus, because if I stay on that, my <laughs> blood pressure's going to go up. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, before we go to break, Magic Band Plus. Okay. Is it worth the price? It was about 50 bucks with tax. I wouldn't have done it. Uh, how do you feel about the fact that you need to charge the thing? It takes 90 minutes to charge. When you first buy it, you got to charge it. You know what? I already have my watch that needs to charge, so uh, that was kind of a... Uh... Oh, okay. Well, and that's the other thing. It's a non, it's a proprietary right, charger. Right, and that was the thing that, that you said was, oh, great. So now if I lose this charger, I'm never going to be able to charge my Magic Band again. But so, they sell extra chargers But they do now. sell a, extra chargers for you. But so. God forbid you give me a, char a device that can charge on an Apple charger or an Android charger or a standard Qi charger. Right. And the other thing, too, was, yeah, it's cute that you walk, past you know so they have the the different uh statues and stuff and if you wave your band in front of it sometimes the or if statue you walk past it or if you look at it wrong you have no idea how to trigger these things right because there's nothing there's nothing that i found i'm sure probably somebody has put together a youtube video saying oh here are the different things that your magic band right. will do and the thing is they've been doing things like this for years back when they had the hundred anniversary you know the hundred year anniversary or the hundredth birthday uh for walt disney they had these special pins that you could get right. and when you would go on certain rides the pins would light up uh or if you were watching the fireworks they'd light up that you know so this is kind of the the so they're same also, thing they're vinyl they're like the old, mm -hmm. old ones right. were. so they're very sweaty they're very hot mm -hmm. to wear right mine fell off three times right after having put it on i had to i had to have you carry it for right because i was afraid i was going to lose it right uh, what else did I have down here? That it didn't have any sound. No sound. So, like, the thing would vibrate and the thing would light up, but, like, you have no idea why. Right. Because when we were walking out of Magic Kingdom, we didn't walk past anything right. special that I knew. And all of a sudden, I'm like, why is the band... Right. You know, I already have enough things on my watch to notify it's, me of different things. I didn't me, need it. it's almost like, hey, this is a really cool technology. Let's sell it. And nobody was like... What are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. what, what's the purpose of it? Oh, yeah. just sell it. We'll figure it out later. Mm -hmm. Whereas when the Magic Bands came out, they had a true purpose. Right. And I could see if we were annual pass holders or we were still DVC and we'd be going down a couple right. of times a year. All right. Sure. I'll get the new band because that's the other thing, too, is that no longer as a resort guest do you get a free magic band because right. that was what they kind of moved away from the room keys right the crack dealers at dizzy gave you the first dose and now you gotta right. pay for the well, rest well fortunately we have enough magic bands we don't need yeah. um <laughs> we, yeah. we don't need to buy a 50 dollars one so all right so the technology to me seems more like a scam than anything else and it's a money grab i think we can kind of agree on that mm -hmm. to a large extent sure we'll go with that all right, let's take our last break, and we'll come back, and we'll chop up the park experience. <laughs> we'll be right back. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, 
and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. All right, we're back bitching about Disney parks. Here we go. <laughs> it's going to be such a great podcast. So, so we've got we've got three to complain about, and I'll start off with Epcot. So we're still at the point where we have to make a reservation to get in the park. Correct. One would think <clears throat> the reason for that was to regulate how many people were in the park, you would think, right? You would think. Still packed and crowded as hell. Don't understand that. Got to make a reservation. But I got people crawling all over me still. So I need to explain that one. Huge sections of the park are shut down because of the construction that's happening. Mm -hmm. Which isn't unusual for Disney. The problem is, is it requires you to completely reroute how you get from point A to point B. Correct. In a park that has liter literally the longest walk between rides already. Mm -hmm. So it's forcing you to extend those rides where they probably could have been a little more strategic in how they set those barriers up. Um, oh, and the fact that you have to order ahead for food now because you can't even stand in line to buy food almost at any of the restaurants, the quick serve restaurants. Well, there. we actually didn't run into any problems with any of the, the quick serve. They were still, oh, okay, good. We, we were still able to, it wasn't mandatory because I know when they first opened after COVID, that was the only way you could all right, then I'll save that complaint for Studios because I have a very specific complaint about right. that in Studios. So, so Epcot, we really didn't d do any um, – because the food and wine was going on. So that you had to right. go uh, to the, the little individual booths and they weren't really that busy. And then after that, we, we kind of cut our day – early because that was our one that was our first day in the park it was extremely hot and um you know there was la you know so much lack of shaded areas for us to to go and hide that we just kind of called it a day just because we were just overheated um by that point so we really didn't have a big quick service meal we just kind of snacked so we weren't there way. long enough for it to really be a problem right okay. right so then we go to hollywood studio mm-hmm Again, crowded. Don't know why. Uh, the restriction to the quick serve, I had a problem with here because right. it was hot. Normally when it's hot, I'll go into the ABC commissary just to cool off, sit in a corner somewhere, relax. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get in if I didn't have a food order. Mm -hmm. They literally had bouncers right. sitting outside the entrance not letting people in. Right. How do you how do you do that? It's like getting a reservation know. at McDonald's. It's idiotic. Right. I didn't understand that. But you did eventually get in because you said you were just going oh, well, into. They stuck me in a <laughs> literally between like two a... pillars to charge <laughs> the scooter. When I went to go find you, I'm like, where the heck is he? He's... Now I'll give I give total props to all the cast members right. that were there because they want they were making sure I was okay. They were offering right. me water. The one woman comes over and asks if I wanted to have a cupcake. So. The staff was fantastic, right. but the policies, I think, right. were terrible. That's, I think, what it is, is it's the policies that other people right. put into place, and now you have these cast members that are the ones enforcing it and yeah. are like, ugh. So the other thing that bugged me was I was very much looking forward to going to Galaxy's Edge, going to Doc Ondar's, and shopping and buying some of the unique stuff, and they didn't have Jack in there. Right. Not only did they not have anything cool, new, or interesting, they had a 20-minute wait in line to look at the lightsabers that they had in, in the in the case if you wanted to buy something. Mm -hmm. A 20-minute wait to to spend 200 and some dollars. Yeah, that is crazy. That's ridiculous. And they had a guy sitting there enforcing, like, almost like he had a cattle prod, making sure people were bunched up on top of each other because... The lines were packed so tight. Right, right. That was such a turnoff for me. It yeah. really was. Um, what else did we have? 
uh, finding a seat at the quick serve was was like you know almost impossible. You, you had people just circling around waiting for someone to right, get up. Right, right. Now we did eat at the docking station. Right. And that, again, didn't have a problem, you know, because they asked when you got there, did you do a mobile order or are you placing an order? Because they had two separate lines. Right. They let you get in to order something, which was which was nice because I could at least get in and cool off. There. Right. And then, you know, just like, w- you know, the quick serve. But we've had that before where there weren't always tables available, depending on what time. Well, before our quick serve was always the way that we went because right. or the, the mobile ordering was how we went because that was our secret weapon. Right. Right. And now every Everybody does it, so of course you need the app to do it, and right. you know. But it worked out. We, you know, we still got a meal. We still had a table. You know, it couldn't couldn't book anything with Savi's workshop to build a lightsaber. Well, and honestly, if we had tried to book it when we had made our reservations, we probably would have. I shouldn't have to book spending four hundred dollars. I understand that six months in advance. I shouldn't have to do that. Right. But that's the thing is when we went two years ago, we made those reservations as soon as we could make them and we and got my them. my biggest concern here was I couldn't even see that there weren't reservations or how to make that. There well, wasn't I even did. an option. Right. It, I, it took you a while to find Because them. I had to search. I did a search for Savi's and Right. Again, it was a whole secret thing because if I didn't know what to call it, right. I wouldn't have been able to find it. There was nothing obvious. Again, you had to search, but you had to know what you were searching right. for. So, um, There were far fewer character interactions at Galaxy's Edge this time than the last time. Mm-hmm. Everywhere you look, last time we were there, there was a character. You were bumping into him left and right. Right. There were two or three. Kylo Ren and some stormtroopers. Right. That was and at it. one point in time, Chewbacca and somebody else was up on a oh, platform somewhere. Oh, see, I didn't somewhere. even see them. You couldn't interact with them. Mm. They were basically right. up there just waving to people like it was a parade float. Right, right. Well, that even happened when we were in Epcot. Pooh Bear was behind a fence. Oh, yeah. You know. They stuck him out in the sun, In the sun, too. the poor oh, Pooh Bear. Man. He was melting, I'm sure. Yeah. So. Um, the other issue I had was solo time, solo rider times, not single rider. It was solo rider at Smuggler's Run, which right. I thought was, was funny. Right. They don't publish them. Right. You didn't know. The only way we knew it was a five minute single rider line was because we overheard someone say it. And we're like, um, excuse me, how long is a single rider? And they're like five minutes. I'm like, all right, let's go. Right. And like one other person did the same thing. And it's like. Given how bad your application works for booking these rides, how are you not? It, it's not up on the signs. Right. Nobody's out there. They have one cast member come out and start saying, hey, five minute solo ride, single rider ride if mm-hmm. anybody wants to get on. Right. How do you not have a provision for that? Right. And and that's something. So going back to Epcot, Test Track has been a single rider ride for as long as I'm, as I can remember. So most people know about it. So they have, you know, three separate entrances for it. Um, And then, of course, as soon as you get close, they're like, oh, don't forget, you know, your party will be separated, blah, 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 blah. And and you go on. Um, I had only known about Soren having it from watching somebody else's video. So if I didn't watch that other person's video, I wouldn't have known. And I think at Soren, they're still doing it as a test. It's not official. And again, we had gotten it as the the one lightning lane and when we went up i was like oh are you guys still doing oh look and they basically just have like a cast member holding a sign saying single rider and then you go on smugglers run i wasn't sure if they were doing it until we got to the front of it and we're like oh okay great and we you know i think it took us longer to walk the whole entrance that's that's just poor planning and poor execution on disney's part Mm -hmm. That's a major selling point that you could be using Absolutely. to enhance people's yeah. uh, visits there, mm-hmm. especially with the crappy system that you put in place instead of you right. know, the fast passes. Right. So we, at one point in time, wanted to go over to Star Wars Launch Bay mm-hmm. and cool off, look at the stuff they had there, see if there's mm-hmm. anything to shop for. And it was literally a ghost town. Right. They shut down the Little Mermaid thing that was there. They shut right, down well, the little gift Merma- shop that was there. Right. Little Mermaid has been shut down since. But everything was shut down. The only thing right. that was open was a couple of the, of the Play Disney thing. Right. Uh, but they did have Star Wars characters 
that was still open. Yeah, in, if you in walked that. five miles back. Well, there, that was you the whole thing, that right? They, they because weren't what advertising the, it, anymore. right? Well, no, they had the sign when you got to the area, so you had to know. But yeah, that was the whole thing because the Launch Bay area, there was the whole shop there, and then you'd walk through the shop, and right. then and they'd have the, the characters and artifacts from the raw uh, from the like, movies and things. It was like just a completely forgotten right. area. Right. It was back just kind of, and, and the other thing too was it closed at five. Right. So then that whole section, even though there wasn't a whole lot to the section to begin with, became even more of a ghost right. town because again, you already had. The Little Mermaid that ha they haven't reopened Little Mermaid yet. So the little princess store right next to it, that shut down. Then there's a Play Disney gift shop that hasn't opened yet. So you had the couple of characters, but no gift shop. And then you had... Like at that point yeah. in time, just shut the whole area down right, and exactly. block it off. Exactly. You're just... It's ridiculous to even have a couple of things open. Right. Like, like I went to get the scooter. I could have swore I saw a tumbleweed blow blow through. It was so deserted over there. Well, the squirrels were more entertaining yeah. over there. They it, was, were, it was embarrassing. Yeah, it was it really kind of sad. And the other thing, too, was like Maddie and I did um, the Muppet movie. And there's a there's a Muppet gift shop as soon as you get out. And I was like, all right, as soon as we get out, we'll go into the you know gift shop to cool off. And that wasn't open, too. So that was really kind of the first... You know, seeing a lot of the gift shops that weren't open because in Epcot, we Epcot doesn't have as many little gift shops along the way because you have all of the different countries, right, you right. know, so all of those were open. So we really didn't see the effect of things until we got, right. you know, to Epcot. All right. Five minutes, Magic Kingdom, and then we're going to summarize. Okay. <laughs> you, you go, you go. Cause. Okay, so for the Magic Kingdom, that was our our Halloween party. As you had mentioned before, with the Halloween party, they let you get into the park uh, three hours before your park time. So, of course, there's, you know, tons of lines to, to try and get in, everybody to get in. And, of course, because of the holiday party, you have a special band, so it takes longer to get in. And, of course, the storms are coming, so you got people that are trying to leave the park people trying to to come in the park so of course very crowded you know at the beginning of it um and it always seems to be kind of disorganized no matter what time you go so i don't know if it's something where if we actually went closer to seven o'clock or closer to six o'clock if we wouldn't run into that or not um well and what would make sense if they did that is you do a rope drop type thing mm -hmm. and for all the people who are coming in for the party you check their, you get them checked in, you get their bands on in that time ahead of time because right. they're all queuing up. Yeah, because that happened at... And then you have a rope drop when you let them in. Because that happened when we did, was it when we did the Christmas party? it was a Christmas party. Where you so. actually checked in at the Polynesian. Right. And you got your band and everything. So you were already checked in. So as soon as you got off the monorail, you went right in. Right. So they need to kind of go back to, to that system of, you know, checking in someplace else. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, that their security system has gotten better because they don't do every bag being checked. Right. So you kind of go through a, a metal detector, uh, some sort of scanning well, thing. I don't know if that's better or if it's just more lax to get people through. I don't know. But it, it seemed to go smoother. So that that was at least a positive that that I saw. Um, but obviously here was another instance. Now, again, don't know how much of it was because it was the holiday party or not. But again, we saw a lot of different shops that were closed. But right. again, not every shop is always open for the holiday party. Well, and some so, of the shops we know were closed because they turned them into other things. Right, exactly. And then some uh, rides or certain attractions, they turn over to trick-or-treating you right. know, areas. The one thing that was bizarre was, you know, because, again, they have all these different trick-or-treating sections, um, and they didn't start handing out candy until 7 o'clock. And at one point, we were in Tomorrowland, and it was 6 o'clock, and there was a line forming and for people. And they were people, people form a line, which was To, to wait for candy. Yeah. For free candy. For a couple that, pieces of candy you'd get. So we were just like, no, we're going to go on some other rides. So that was kind of crazy. But once the party kind of started and also once the rain kind of down, died down, we really didn't have too many issues. 
it kind of spread out because then you have the people because there are people that go to the party just to go and see the specialty characters that only come out for the holiday party. Right. Then you have people that are just doing the trick or treating that, you know, then you have some people that are there to see the special Halloween parade and to see the special uh, Halloween fireworks. So it kind of helps to, to break it up because that's when Maddie was able to get on splash mountain in five minutes. Uh, Big Thunder Mountain in five minutes. I think Space Mountain was 20 minutes. I think yeah. that was her her longest wait. Haunted Mansion, I think it was about 20 minutes, maybe even less for us to to get on so that. So let's summarize before we leave here. Sure. Give me, a, give me a score, one out of 10, 10 being the highest of your overall Disney experience. Give me that artificially high score you're going to give me. Seven. Really? Wow, I would not have thought it would have been that low. Really? Yeah. You would have thought I would have given it higher. I thought you would have been an eight or a nine. Uh, ha ha! I'd probably give it about a five. Mm -hmm. Um, And really my problem was more with management and execution. Mm -hmm. You know, poor planning, poor... And you can blame, blame it on the fact that they haven't brought all their staff back. Whatever right. you want to blame it mm -hmm. on. But there's ways to compensate for that. And to me, it was a disappointing experience. The one highlight of our trip, and I think we can both agree on this. Steve from Brooklyn. Steve from Brooklyn. <laughs> Absolutely. Steve from Brooklyn. He was so close to restoring my faith in Disney. He was so optimistic. He was, he was the best bus driver we ever had. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. He was so good, I almost want to use Facebook again so I can follow him. Almost. But Facebook's too evil. Right, right. So fortunately, I'm already friends with him. So, yeah. And I had been friends with him already. And when he pulled up, I was like... That was a very... I'm Facebook friends with you. That was a magical experience. And I don't use that term very often mm -hmm. for Disney, but that was a magical experience. And I, right. And I thank him for that. Yes. All right, that is all we had for today, and probably it's that's more than enough. We kind of cut some of my complaints short because I, you know, do have a heart condition with <laughs> blood pressure and everything. So, <laughs> before we do go, though, uh, I would like to once again invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions listed as insights in entertainment, audio and video versions of all of our. Network's podcast can be found under Insights into Things. We're on Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, etc. I would also ask you to write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash insights underscore things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We're also on Instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things. Or you can find all that and much more on our official website at insightsintothings.com. That's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.